In this video, we're going to be looking at the characteristics about what makes certain objects in our solar system a planet and why certain other objects do not qualify. So if we take a look at Earth, for example, it fulfills the three characteristics that are required to be a planet, starting with the fact that it orbits around a star. And of course, the star that is central to our solar system is the sun. The second characteristic describes the shape of a planet of which Earth falls into as well. We can see that this picture of the Earth shows the Earth to be circular, but because we know the Earth is in fact 3D, we can say that one requirement of planets is that they are roughly spherical in shape. Now the third and hardest characteristic to explain has to do with the gravitational force of a planet. So we know that gravity is very important in solar systems as well as planets because gravity is what actually causes planets to orbit around their star. So because the sun has a significantly larger mass than any of the planets in the solar system, that's why planets orbit the sun and not the other way around. Well, we can see that this is actually true for planetary systems as well, because any objects that orbit the planet, which are what we call satellites, clearly orbit around the planet and not the other way around. Now, some satellites can be naturally occurring, and these are what we call moons, such as Earth's moon, but we see around Earth that there are many examples of artificial satellites, such as a communication satellite or spacecraft, when they pass around the Earth like this space shuttle. Now, we say that Earth is a true planet because it is significantly larger than any of the satellites, natural or artificial, that orbit around it, but this is not true of every object in the solar system. One example of this is the planet Pluto, or shall we say the dwarf planet Pluto, because unlike Earth and its moon, we can see that Pluto and its largest moon, Charon, are relatively close in size, which means that Charon is large enough to actually exert gravitational effects on Pluto, causing it to move in an orbit-like path like this, while Charon orbits in the outer orbital path like this. So because Pluto and its moon Charon form a binary orbit system, we can say that Pluto does not have a strong enough gravitational pull in order to dominate all other satellites that orbit it. Now that we have a concrete definition on the requirements of what makes a planet a planet, we're going to take a look at the three closest neighbors of Earth, that being the inner planets, so named because they are closest to the Sun. The first two of the inner planets are Mercury, which is the closest planet to the Sun, and Venus, which is the second closest planet to the Sun, which we see covered in clouds here. So just like Earth, Mercury and Venus are known as terrestrial planets. Terrestrial is an adjective that means covered by land, as opposed to covered by water or covered by gas. And just like Earth, the surface of Mercury and Venus, if you ignore the atmosphere, is almost entirely made of either a combination of rock and metal. Although with Earth, we'll see that Earth is a little bit of an exception to this. So if we start with Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun, let's just draw a simplified representation of our Sun here, and let's show the light and other radiation coming off of the Sun like this. And because Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, we know that Mercury is going to be hit by a lot of the light and radiation that the Sun produces. And for this reason, Mercury has almost no atmosphere unlike the other inner planets, especially Venus and Earth. And this is because all of the gas that was originally attached to Mercury was basically blown off as radiation hit Mercury, causing it to be released into space. 
Venus, however, is far enough away from the sun that this is actually not a problem. Now, if you were to measure the temperature of Mercury and Venus, you would expect Mercury would be hotter because it's closer to the sun, but Venus actually holds that record and we can see that its temperatures get unsurvivable compared to earth and this is actually because of its atmosphere so venus has the thickest atmosphere out of every planet in the solar system or rather by thickest i should actually use the word densest atmosphere and one of the reasons why venus has such a high temperature is because its atmosphere is 96 percent carbon dioxide which we know is a greenhouse gas and because 96 percent of venus as atmosphere is a powerful greenhouse gas on earth this causes the greenhouse effect on venus to go out of control and basically what this means is as sunlight hits venus the sunlight is going to pass through venus's carbon dioxide atmosphere get to the surface but when it bounces off the surface, it is unable to get back into space, meaning that any energy that the sun releases that hits Venus is going to be trapped, further increasing its already hot temperature. Now, if we go to Earth, we, we of course, being from Earth, know that our planet in the, in the solar system is very, very special because in the solar system, it is the only location where we can find liquid water, and that's what makes Earth different from other terrestrial planets because between 70 to 75 percent of Earth's surface is covered by liquid water, and there is only one other location in the solar system that has liquid of any kind, let alone water. And of course, Earth is special because we know that we are an example of organic life. And to the best of our knowledge, Earth is the only planet in the solar system, and indeed, that we have discovered in our universe that has confirmed organic life on it. And the reason why liquid water and organic life exist on Earth is because of Earth's unique atmospheric composition that contains a small amount of oxygen, specifically 21% of Earth's atmosphere, that allows life to be able to breathe with a small amount of CO2 that exists in Earth's atmosphere in order to keep the temperature stable so that the surface of Earth is not too hot and not too cold and therefore able to support life. One other characteristic of Earth that sets it apart from other locations in the solar system is the fact that Earth is tectonically active. And we know that uh, plate tectonics is what causes the continents to move apart from each other. And this also explains why Earth has a very active volcano system and very frequent earthquakes, both of which occur because of plate tectonics and continental drift. Now, Earth, as the third planet from the solar system, we know that one orbit of Earth takes approximately 365 days to orbit around the Sun because this is the amount of time that constitutes one year on Earth. Although, as we see, as we get closer to the Sun with Mercury and Venus, the length of one year on Mercury and Venus is significantly shorter than on Earth. The final of the inner planets and most interesting from a science fiction perspective is Mars. So Mars is colloquially called the red planet because, well, the surface of it is red. And this exists because of a an abundance of one element in the soil in Mars. And of course, that element is iron, which when it reacts in the presence of oxygen gas, turns this distinctive rusty red type of color. 
Now, Mars is interesting from the perspective of science fiction because it is the most likely candidate for a, an extraterrestrial colony. Eventually, humans want to migrate from Earth and set up colonies on Mars. Uh, but this, of course, is going to be very difficult, first of which because Mars has a very, very thin atmosphere, which means not only is there not enough oxygen to support human life, but there isn't enough carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in order to trap heat and be warm enough in order for liquid water to form. But of course, the reason why Mars is famous as a potential colonization destination is even though we don't have liquid water, there is lots of water that exists on Mars in the form of solid ice, both underground, under the surface of Mars, and in the ice caps in the polar regions at the north and south end of the planet. Mars is also fascinating geologically because it's hypothesized that Mars used to be tectonically active but is not anymore, as evidenced by a number of very large canyons on Mars that put the largest on Earth to shame. And one of the most notable geological features on Mars is the largest volcano, not just, uh, let's spell volcano properly, the largest volcano not just in the solar system, but in the known universe that we've looked at. So this volcano is so big that it is more than twice as tall as the tallest mountains on Earth, and if we measure the surface area of this volcano, it's roughly comparable to the size of France, and for that reason, we give the volcano the name Olympus Mons, meaning Mount Olympus, the ancestral homeland of the gods in Greek mythology. Now that we've looked at the four examples and interesting features of the inner planets, the next video will focus on the planets farthest away from the sun, the outer planets.